Hi, welcome to Undead Yarn. This is episode 109. And my name is Heidi, and I go by Nitty Girl on Ravelry and Undead Yarn pretty much everywhere else. How are you guys doing? Um, I have a couple of whips I want to show you. Um, the first one, I, I can't remember. I think I might have talked about this one last time. Let's see. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Well, I have a, a whip that I started a little while ago, just before, uh, near the ending of school. So it was, it's obviously a simple knit because I didn't have much brain power then. And this is called Wrapped in Lino, and it's by Espas Trico, the uh, people who are have the yarn shop in Canada. I love their patterns, and I really like watching their podcasts, too. They're a lot of fun. Um, this yarn is, I think, it, I believe it's discontinued because I could not find the website anymore. It's handpaintedyarn.com, and this is... I think it said it's a DK. This is not a DK. This has to be more of a fingering. Um, but it was this special yarn that they dyed and then spun and then plied together. See, it's got like little cocoons in it. And I forget exactly what it's called, but um, I have a couple of skeins of it and it's enough to make this really big pattern. And the, I'm glad I picked something simple because it's got a lot of a lot going on in the yarn. And that is in my Loopy Groupy bag, which is by Della Q. And I have I went to um, the Texas Library Association uh, conference and I got this tour team thing there. I love tour books. It's one of the independent book um, publishers, and they have a lot of authors on it that I like. And so in my By the Bay bag, yoga bag, I have something that I casted on. <laughs> I was thought I was going to start Fleece Flight by Ninja Chickens, but then I realized I hadn't. I found this yarn, and I hadn't knit something from my friend who's pregnant yet. So this is the Simple Baby Hat Pattern, and it's by Allison Williams, and it's a free pattern. And I'm using a very very nice luscious yarn. When I held it and I saw the color, I was like, it's perfect for a little girl. I'm making the infant hat and I'm pretty much done with it. I just have to bind off the top. So this is almost an FO. And isn't that a pretty colorway? The, co the yarn is Sublime and it's a baby cash merino silk DK and it, so it's so 75% extra fine merino 20% silk and 50% cashmere uh, and it feels so nice and squishy let me show you what the ball looks like I thought it was uh, um, sublime I thought at first that it might have been um, you know how Debbie Bliss has a cashmere you know, but it's not and let's see I think this one yeah, this is machine wash too, so that's a good thing. Especially if you're making baby stuff. <laughs> so that's almost done. And then I also started working on, I picked up an old whip because that's what I'm trying to do this year. You know, we're doing our uh, finisher frog it. And I picked up an old whip. It's in my Screw You Harvey bag by... <laughs> by um, Erin Lane. You know, it's got their little sheeple. That's her, her little black sheep of the family. She's always getting in trouble. <laughs> and I picked up, this was a colorway that um, I dyed by mistake. I was trying to dye Monster High self-striping. And I put in too much green, or I put in something that made it all turn green. I don't remember exactly what. But here's the ball. And I really liked it. I started, I just was curious how it would knit up. So when I started knitting it, I was like, oh, I'm keeping this one for myself. So <laughs> I think I might have to, and maybe the other one I sold, I don't remember because it's been a while since I've done self-striping. So anyway, I am working on a whip, which feels good. I'm glad I'm trying to finish some things. So here is the socks I was going to show you last week, or last, not last week, last time. Um, I'm gonna 
attempt to put them on the sock blockers. I'm not sure how this will work out, but I saw somebody else, I think, um, once upon a corgi, put them backwards, put long socks on backwards on her sock blockers, because I'm like her, I have a small foot. Um, but these are very long. Oh, it won't work because of the heel. So I guess I'll just show you one on the sock blocker and one not on the sock blocker. I'm going to have to put it on the other way. She had put it on backwards because she had made socks for her husband and it actually was able to show what the sock looked like, but I'm forgetting. This is a short foot. It's just a long heel. And these are not showing up as bright as they really are. The colors are brighter than that. That looks more like it. Yeah, I have a couple mistakes, but I don't care. They're for me, and I like them. I've already worn them. They're comfy. And here's the other one. So these are just plain socks. My plain sock pattern that I use. Uh, when I do knee highs, I start at 78 stitches because I like to do cuff down. And I start at 78 stitches at the top. And then I do about an inch of ribbing and then I just decrease randomly. You can see right here like this is where your leg is larger and then when it starts to get skinnier. So I decrease randomly through this area so that it will eventually be tighter when it gets to the part of my leg that's smaller. And so yeah, I have a, I made, I think I've only made two pairs of these that I can remember, but I would like to make some more because they're really great for when you wear boots. A lot of times you can pull these up high and then they'll stick out of your boots like boot toppers. So, and it's always nice to be warm in the winter, even though we our winter's not the same as everybody else's. I think that was all. Oh, I am also working on the Raina shawl with my Killer in the Home colorway, but I can't find it. <laughs> I don't know where I put it. I've got stuff scattered all over my desk because I'm trying to um, organize and dye everything for Houston Fiber Festival. So it's kind of chaotic in there right now. Not that it isn't always a little chaotic, but <laughs> I usually can find what I've been working on. So, yeah. And I did want to, let's see. Is there something else I wanted to mention before I move on? Um, no, because I, I wanted to show this before I get to the um, talking about what I've been doing and then uh, announcing the winners. This is a new colorway. I have already have a couple of ideas for different 80s things. I did Killer in the Home, which was inspired by Adam Ant, and he's my favorite, my favorite musician of all time. I love him. I just love his music, and of course, when I was a teenager, I thought he was so hot. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I also really love Duran Duran. And so I was looking through their album covers and I really like the Rio album cover. I left a little bit white because there is the, the person, there is some white in the album too. I almost just did the solid colors and covered up all the white, but I thought it might be too busy if you do that. I like a little bit of break in there. So this one has black and then a shade of red and burgundy and a lilac. And if you look at the album cover, that's what it looks like. Let's see if I can pull up a picture. I know I did put one on my phone. I'm just not sure how it's going to show up when I pull it up. Let's try. So here's the picture. I'm trying to put it so it doesn't have such a glare. Here's the picture. And here is the yarn. I think it's a pretty good representation. When you see it close, you can see that there are different shades of red, that reddish color. It's not really purple. The only purple, if you look at it up close, is the wording, which is a lilac purple. The rest of it's like a red and a burgundy. So that's my new colorway, and I will put up some pre-orders. I have three that are already ready to go. Um, maybe I'll just say that they're, they're available, and then I'll dye some more for when I go to the Fiber Fest. 
And that's basically what I'm busy doing right now. Oh, I did want to mention the shawl that I'm wearing. I made this shawl ages and ages ago. I don't know if any of y'all remember Sock Bunny. Um, she used to have a podcast. And she made a couple of patterns. And one of them was a very simple pie shawl. And I wanted to do this because pie shawls take forever, but this was simple. I didn't have to um, pay attention to a lot of charts. And I have this beautiful pin, but I don't remember where I bought it. I think I bought it from somebody in who, um, somebody from Texas, I assume, because I think I bought this at a fiber festival. But I just love the copper, and it matches my brown and yellow shawl. You can see I'm wearing all my colors today, orange <laughs> and yellow and brown. And I don't remember the exact pattern for this shawl, but you can go on my pattern page and look at it. And I think this one was a free pattern. And I finally, I've knit this years ago. I want to say like five years ago. And I finally blocked it because I was blocking things for Houston Fiberfest. I was like, oh, there's that shawl that's been sitting on my desk for five years. Maybe I'll do that one too. <laughs> so I love the way it came out. It's also, I don't know if you can see, first time I used beads and I don't remember where I bought these beads from I want to say I might have gotten them from um, Denise of Lost City Knits but I'm not sure I'm pretty sure these were not Ravel from Ravelry and uh, not Ravelry I mean I'm pretty sure these were not from like Joann's or anything like that because the beads look pretty nice they've got a nice sheen to them so I like I said I can't remember where I bought the beads but this is the first beaded shawl I ever made and I have another whip that has beads in it, but of course, it's a whip. <laughs> anyway, I really love it. I love, like, you can wear it the way I just had it on before, but I also like to, like to wear it like this. And then it kind of looks like a sweater in the back. And I know I'm short, so you probably can't see all of it, but I really like the way it looks and it's very nice and warm. This yarn, it was Wisdom's yarn. Um, I don't think it was Poems. I know, well actually I know it's Universal Yarns and I think it's Wisdom Yarns, but I'm not sure. It was a sock yarn, a self-striping obviously. I really like how it looks in this pattern. And I would knit this pattern again because you get a nice big shawl out of it and it's not that hard. It's mostly stockinette, I mean garter, and then um, garter, stockinette, and ribbing. So that is an F.O. I, I don't guess I can't really call it an F.O. I finally finished blocking it, so that's what it is. <laughs> it's an F.O. I should have blocked a long time ago. And I'm wondering if I'm putting it on backwards right now. It's so funny. Sometimes shawls, yes, yes, because it's stockinette. It's supposed to be stockinette. There, I think I might have shown you the back side, which does not show off the beads very well. So anyway, I'm going to put it back on because it's a little chilly right here. It's definitely not chilly outside, though. It's 95, going to be 95 today, and it's getting to be kind of yucky out there. But yesterday we had really nice rain, and in the evening it felt great. It felt really good. Hmm. I'm a little confused. Well, I'm just going to leave it. Anyway, I wanted to say that school is out. That's why I'm busy dying. And um, this past weekend, I went to a wedding and caught up with some old friends. And then we had knit group on Sunday. And Susanna, I see, is moving. Her family is moving to, some. I think it's Virginia, Maryland area. So if y'all run into her, say hello. She's very sweet and she's a good friend. She's a really great person. And I hope you have safe travels, Susanna. Um, I told you about the new colorway. I guess what's left to do is talk about the FO thread. And I tried, it's funny, I thought maybe I could pull up um, a picture on Ravelry and print it out because I finally got my computer hooked up to the color printer in our house and it did not work for some reason it was not letting me um, wasn't letting me print a full screen picture so I'm gonna show you the person who won is Joe Dadaya 
She's won a $7 or less pattern, and she used the nightshade colorway to make this crochet cowl. How pretty is that? Very pretty. So contact me, Jodadiah, and let me know, and she is from California, let me know what $7 or less pattern you would like. And then for the FO, th or not the FO thread, the finisher frog it along, the person has won a skein. This is Dream and Color. Oh, look at that, I messed up the tag. Dream and Color Smushy. And the color is Ruby River. And it is 100% super fine Australian merino. It says spun and dyed in the USA. And the colorway, I don't know if it says the colorway on here. Some of these companies just put, oh, it says Ruby River. It does say the colorway. So anyway, the winner is Doc Firewoman. So Doc Firewoman, who is Deborah from Arkansas, who also has the Diary of a Pharmacist Farm, <laughs> Pharmacist Farm Gal, <laughs> Physicist Farm Gal. I need speech therapy. Um, <laughs> She has won this lovely skein of Dream and Color. So uh, PM me on Ravelry and let me know your address and that you heard this, and I will send this right out to you. I don't believe I have anything else to say except please come visit me at Houston Fiber Fest if you are in the area. It is June 21st, I believe, through 23rd, and I will be there every day. And uh, come say hi, because I'm going to be by myself. And I hope there will be people who walk by and say, do you need a break? <laughs> we'll see. If not, I guess I'm going to have to um, make sure I bring something to eat with me every day. Anyway, um, that's coming up soon, and that's why I'm busy dying. So I might put, I have a lot of things that I've dyed that I have not put up on the website. I've just been kind of hoarding it for Dal or for Houston. So... I'm going to put some things up. I will put up the new colorway Rio so y'all will have a chance to win it because I know not everybody will be able to go to the show. so Or not win it, to buy it. Because <laughs> not everybody will be able to go to the show. So that will go up and then um, I will be going through my inventory and probably putting stuff up uh, randomly. Um, I don't have a lot uh, in my account right now so I'm trying to um, see if I need any more yarn. I think I have enough yarn for the Fiber Festival, but um, I'll probably put a few things up in the shop that I haven't put up yet. And anyway, I hope y'all are having a good summer. Um, I will try to talk to you guys after Houston Fiber Fest. It might be, um, might actually get another podcast in this month. We'll see. And don't forget to watch Pen Hook and Needles. My girls are doing, I think they're still doing the Autism Awareness Knit Along. It's, let's see, April, May, June. Yes, it's still going on. So go check them out. And I will talk to you guys soon. Get busy knitting or get busy dying.